item under old business, the public benefit. Okay, Doug, that, sorry, that's, that's you. And I, I want to thank you for giving us the two examples because if you if you use one and just insert a couple from the other one, you, you got a perfect perfect ordinance draft here. Well, I just left the one that we had on the table last month. Yeah. And um, and found a different one. Well, and the only thing I saw in my notes was to add. Um, private in with the public because Doug's been doing so such good work on those uh, minutes. I'm not taking as good a note as I used to. <laughs> well, so, so what I did was I went back and I said, "Hey, I'll just start another one that includes the public and private um, ownership. entities ownership. Yeah, yeah. into." For the into some sort of ordinance there, and most of this stuff actually came this from our PUD yeah, yeah. part of the zoning rules. Okay. So it's very similar to that, but it does include there, private. There's some, well, and it isn't private use, actually, it's public use. Privately owned. Uh, it might be privately oh, yeah. owned. Private ownership. Public for public use, like the Lions um, park. park or something like that, um, or if the water park is owned by a, a corporation but it is designated for public use or for public benefit. Now, Tony, you had um, a concern about that. I don't. I, my only issue is I think when you open it up to the private sector, you're going to have a problem drawing a fair and consistent line for who to include and who to exclude. And that's my concern where this is going to be a never running list. And then when you do draw the line with somebody, you're going to have a problem because why are you drawing the line there? Why not here? I think the line is much more easily drawn to limit it to public ownership where it's owned by the city, it's owned by the state, it's owned by the school, and then you have a very bright line of okay. who qualifies for this and who doesn't. The other thing you're going to have is you're going to have private entities seeking to fit into this because it allows them B3 signage. Yeah. Um, and that's another concern. And again, then you're drawing the line. You're letting one type of entity, I mean, we had an endless list of, you know, do we let whatever, religious retreats, do we let... Um, seminaries, mentally disabled, where in the heck do we cut the line off? Who gets it, who doesn't? It's very simple. If it's owned by the, the government, they fit. If it's privately owned, we're trying to draw lines between people or private entities, and I think you're going to run into problems. Let's use picking, an, You can't okay. pick and choose. Yeah, let's use an example. Let's say that somebody puts in a golf course and it's a privately owned golf course, So, but it's open to the public for, you know, golf fees to use, they would not fall under here. Correct. And yeah. where would they fall? Under a B, whatever their business district is. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, and, yeah. and in many of the city ordinances, they say public, quasi-public, or semi-public, and then use a definition of what that might be to benefit the public or for public use. And I think that, that the acid, mm -hmm. yeah. Can be never ending. So we are cracking it all open to B3 signage. And kind of, kind that's of like the concern. Kind of like the restrictive nature. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you know what? We can, we can leave it as public. But here's another thing. The difference between the public school and the private school. They would fall under different ordinance sections. So we need to be sure that school, I mean, the yeah, but uh, most, equal treatment. Most private district. schools are owned by religious organizations, so that's, that, well, that wouldn't fall under this then, though, would it, if it's public? No. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I think that if we want to keep it clear so that we don't have a 
never ending list, we could just leave it to publicly public own the district we or lease or just plain publicly own. The, the simpler the better. Okay. So you're drawing a bright line where you yeah. aren't picking and choosing. This person is good, yeah. this person is bad. That's where a you're lot of cities are going to get in trouble. Yeah, because they do. They, they really look at for the public use, not necessarily who owns that use. But if we want to keep it simple, yes, <laughs> um, we could just have the public and not and then if we if we look at so does everybody concur mm -hmm. we'll just have publicly public. owned structures and uses okay, okay. all right the um, I would also suggest that this be an overlay district and the reason and when I was doing the research and everything you then don't have to rezone let's say you want a, a south end fire station and it's in a residential district with the public benefit overlay this applies and is allowed but you've got, it's almost like the old PUD concept. And then you don't have to rezone unless you take a look, and this is what some cities do, they take a look at their comp plan and where the land use is classified as public or publicly owned, then they just adopt the zoning act and then, and then adopt text after that as the public benefit and then it's all rezoned public benefit. Otherwise the overlay district just is overlaid and you don't have to rezone. And in your preamble or in one of the beginning paragraphs, the applicability you just say that it applies to all zoning districts in the city, local, all residential, commercial and industrial and It's a thought. If, if we're keeping it simple, that would be simple. The, uh, the purpose, if you take, if, if any of you have any suggestions or anything, can you scribble them on your, your note and, and give to Doug? Do, do we want a general discussion? It's up to you guys. Yeah. Have have you kind of compared the two drafts? Well, it makes life pretty simple. If we're going to go with the public benefit, if it's owned by the public, it's the public. We ain't got to worry about swimming pools or nursing home or. Oh yeah, whatever. you are. Car if it's public, it's public. Yeah, but. If it's private, it's private. But that's not what we're saying. Is the types of land uses that are publicly owned is what this is defining. But it would include everything publicly owned. It would include. I, don't, I can't think of some, anything publicly owned that is excluded here. No, but it's it, but might be a permanent use, it might be a conditional use, or it might be an accessory use. That's fine. But That's I mean, what I'm it saying. would be all public. Anything owned publicly would fall under this definition. Mm -hmm. Whether if it was a publicly owned nursing home, it would fall under this. Correct. Yeah. But would it be a conditional use? The, that's what we're saying. Oh. So getting into the, the fire plates, you know, where would that be placed? Because in one of the copies, um, in, in one of the copies, garages and off-street parking are permit accessory uses. In the other copy, they're conditional use permits. I'm just saying is that, you know, some of these might be better as accessory uses and some might not. Um, well, the, you could probably go through that new draft and just eliminate anything that refers to private ownership. Well, and there's only one, and that's on the second page. 
Yeah, so page one. Page one. Well, and then you have private utility yeah. facilities. Cross that out. And where's the other one? Uh, on the front page, uh, V5. Bingo. <laughs> Privately owned, yeah. <clears throat> but then, do you, would you like to see uh, garages and sheds as accessory uses rather than CUPs? Wouldn't that make more sense, possibly? I mean, on this copy, there. Which one are we talking about? The second one or the first one? Or? The, the latest right. copy okay. has. Um, No accessory uses. They're either plugged into permitted uses or conditional uses. Okay, yeah. And when you have maintenance, storage, and equipment facilities, if it's accessory to the primary use, maybe it should just be an accessory use. Or we could deal with it as a conditional use as well. It, yeah, I mean, it could be. We could deal with it. I mean, sure. I'm just saying, I, I one, suspect one that is one, one is as, as time would go on, if we'd find that we're spending too much time trying to authorize conditional uses where they should just be permitted, we can always have that changed. But and I'd I, rather be more restrictive to the beginning and then, and then, then change it. Yes. You must be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what they say. Start out tough, huh? Um, it, the new the new one has golf courses as a condition use, and I think Jerry, we kind of talked about that this being a condition use, didn't we? Because they're permitted use in the older draft, but did we maybe suggest it be condition use? So do you think that maybe this newer copy? And at the very end of your purpose, where it's talking about control by ingress and egress to streets and providing, I'd cross all that out and just put back in what was in that first draft where you talk about while well, minimizing the impact of any such. Insert the last two lines of the old draft, cross out the last two and a half lines of the new draft. So our city garage over here, you'd want that to be a CUP? I don't know. I'm asking you guys. It's a CUP in this newer draft. Garages, sheds for well, storage supplies and maintenance equipment. That would be under golf course. City garage? That's A3. Of course, it's not. The public works facility is where it was fit in here. Oh, this one right here. Yeah, see what down here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, that, that, that has to come as a golf course. Golf course. Yeah. Got it. Right, but do we need that to be a CUP or is that just going to be a okay. permitted okay. use? Structures and equipment. Okay, what a permitted use. All right. Then we have, we so have the community have centers. That's what I'm getting. Well, they really should be. Because they should all be a CUP. And yeah. Well, then you, what about the community centers and the old one? It's a permitted use, and the new one's a CUP. It probably should be a CUP. Well, we just that do all the CUP. Well, then this one is just about, you know, hit, hit it on the nail. Um, the one thing under conference centers where you have item one under C, they're an integral but incidental. You probably want to add incidental part of the principal that, use. That would all come out, though. Uh, community centers, uh, uh, ice arenas, hospitals, uh, that would all come out of this district. That wouldn't be Unless, included. Well, if Unless public, they were publicly right. owned. And maybe just say publicly owned down well, here. Well, we said that in the we beginning. We said that up at the beginning. Yeah. Well, then you're we assuming that out. these are publicly owned. Schools Either it's private or it's public. Right. So we're going, we're going publicly public. owned. Yeah. Everything publicly owned, CUP. Yeah. Black and white. Yeah. What, Madam Chair? Yeah. What we were discussing is that we, we had made this where it's 
it's going to have a significant impact. In other words, if a county owns, you know, one lot in town, let's just say for an example, it's not going to fit under this. No, unless it's that large. It, it's got to be big enough for it to fit. It needs, well. Because it'll be a significant impact. Right, so yeah. it's it's not every, just so that everybody's clear, it's oh, not yeah. every publicly owned piece of property, despite right. the purpose, Right. it has to meet the lot size requirements yeah. to fit under this. Yeah. Hence the B3 signage that was along with it. But then I think we're going to have to look at our sign ordinance where it talks about non-residential uses in residential lot if they're that big. I think we restrict them to 32 square feet or something. Mm -hmm. Does that does that match the B3 signage? Okay, that we have to look at consistency then in the residential districts, the non-residential uses. If they meet all of the other criteria, wouldn't that be taken care of with their CUP? Wouldn't that be part of their CUP for signage? Well, but then you're going to say disregard the sign ordinance. Then you, this would be more restrictive. I mean, there just has to be language that makes it, you know, consistent. That's all. Um, and the other thing under building requirements. Um, no permitted structure shall exceed 35 feet in height. Um, in some ordinances, they'll say three stories um, or 35 feet in height. And I'm wondering if we couldn't just say up to 45 feet may be granted with the CUP. I'm not sure that it should be so open ended. I mean, because then we're really talking about variances. Either put a period behind 35 feet in height, and then there might be a conditional use if you're talking about the permitted uses. Can go higher if allowed through a COP. So, where are you getting your 35 feet from? From ground level? So, to go on top of a hill? No, it's you average grade. Average, average grade. grade. It's already mentioned in the ordinance that way. Oh, sea level? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, that's... <laughs> um, the, this one really, really is inclusive. But I'm wondering if we... We've got to be careful how we write the language so it doesn't sound like, uh oh they're coming in for variance. Um, or a CP. Just... The permitted ones can go up to this much. If you if you want to apply for a CUP for a height different, or let them come in for a variance if they want it higher and they're not meeting that. But that's exactly what it says right now. No structure shall exceed 35 feet in height. Period. period. The city council may grant conditional use for taller buildings after a public hearing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's in there, but should it be a CUP or is it a variant? <laughs> CUP, we should not have variances, period. <laughs> there you go. Although the legislature I know. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, direction. Okay. No. And direction. Then, Please. yeah, I would just, like, like the group has done, take out any mention of private, but when you look under conference centers, they may be publicly owned. Community centers might be publicly owned. Um, Ice Arena is like a city owned. So maybe just public, just I mean, because we're already saying public. Yeah. So we just cross out the private schools, you know, the religious retreats and, and theological, oh. you know, and all of those. Just cross public those out. Private. Yeah, cross out the private. And the private is gone. Keep it clean. Okay. Private is gone. Private is gone. Is there anything you liked in the first draft that was not showing up in the second draft that would be appropriate? And maybe you guys want to read through both of them 
you can drop them off at City Hall and write whatever your comments are on that. I'll come up with something with a, how would you say it? Consensus. With all your, yeah, well, I won't, no. we don't know if there'll be a consensus, but well, in, including yeah. and not including. Did we have a consensus that you're not even going to have accessory uses? Like they fences? Be voided or CUP. Like fences or storage of supplies, well, uh, construction sheds? If you have a ball field, you're going to have fences and you're going to have sheds to store equipment. Store as yeah. part of the whole or as an accessory use? You know, well, it's part of the whole because you need that stuff to run a ball field. Okay, so they need the master plan to show them. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying one of them did have some accessory uses, yep. and the other one doesn't. So we're okay. going more restrictive than Maintenance consensus, guys. Maintenance, storage, and equipment facility. Yeah, but that's for golf course. Oh, okay, that's just for golf course. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if they've got a city garage right, well, down we're, there. We're going to put some permitted accessory uses back in there so it's understood what a permitted accessory use is. Unless you don't think they're needed and they should all have CUPs. <laughs> well, personally, I think they all should have CUPs because... It all should be a CUP for public benefit district. Let's face it, when we built this garage over here, I, I do believe we had to go through a public hearing or something, or we should have, because there's residential area around there. There's people that may have a complaint on If you want to put up a ball field, oh, the worst in the city. Yeah, but I mean, when you're looking at these accessory uses, you know, they're talking about, you know, like a city garage, they're talking about fences, they're talking about construction sheds as a temporary, you know, not to exceed mm -hmm. construction time frame, those kinds of things. But this really looks good because there are a couple of things on here, you know, as Tony has pointed out, um, you know, as the difference between private and public, when you look at the second page under the old one where you have C, retail commercial activities and personal services, now that's starting to kind of smack with just commercial. So we're not using this anyway, right? Okay. So if, you, if you've got, so if you have any remarks or markups, get it to the staff so that they're not scratching their head. What do you think, Tony, as far as they should all be like a CUP, or do you think some of them should be just up and permitted and done and go with the public benefit district? Yeah, I'll have to look at it. I mean, that, that, that's a good point. I'm more inclined to say run them all under a CUP. So we got a plan on what they're going to do instead of just coming in and putting yeah. up on yeah. a permit they can go build whatever they want. I mean, to me, that makes some sense, but I think we'll have to bond on this some more and go over it. Well, and public schools, community parks, you know, I mean, if that impacts the, the neighborhood, should that be a CP rather than a permitted use? I think just look at what you've got, list those permitted use, and see what impact it would be in the neighborhood. If it's close to residential, and maybe it should be a CP. All right, guys. We went over. We went over, we, but the, I know this has been long and hard for you guys. And, and we really need to wind this up for them so that they can write final draft on it next I think time. I learned in zoning that no such thing as final. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a fluid document, they say, ever evolving. Is, is that enough direction, though, guys? Like, are we giving you enough direction? We'll come up with something. Guys, if any of the planning commission members have some additional comments, that would be please nice. let us know. Okay. Tony, any comments or guidance for, for us or for the staff on we will be that one? I go over it. So. Okay. We'll work on it. Thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 750.